Beneath the ocean, below its sunlit surface, is the largest habitat on Earth. In the depths of the deep sea is a fantastic world inhabited by creatures that challenge our ideas about what life on Earth actually is. This dark realm is home to vampires and predators with deadly venom, and ghost-like creatures and giants that inspired the myths of sea monsters. We know little about life in this alien world, yet there are compelling reasons to explore its diversity. Its strange inhabitants play a critical role in the removal of carbon dioxide from our atmosphere, and locked within their venom and tissues may be compounds with the power to treat our most terrifying diseases. This undersea wilderness does not yield its secrets easily. Its crushing pressure and icy waters make it impossible for divers to visit. A few research submarines and a handful of robotic vehicles called ROVs can explore the depths. But there are simply too few of these machines to make an impact. Without the resources in their research fleets to adequately explore life in the depths, the best that oceanographers can achieve are periodic snapshots of life in the deep. This is far from satisfactory. How can scientists properly explore such a remote and challenging realm? The solution to this problem came from an unlikely source, the oil and gas industry. ROVs may be in short supply to scientists, but hundreds of these advanced robots are used to support the exploration and production of petroleum in the Gulf of Mexico and around the world. Oceaneering Incorporated is one of the world's largest producers of industrial ROVs and a major supplier and operator of ROVs to the petroleum industry. Oceaneering operates 85 ROVs in the Gulf of Mexico, Mexico and Canada. Uh, the region consists of those three areas. Worldwide, we operate approximately 250 ROVs. An ROV system costs in excess of $3 million. Uh, can cost significantly more than that, depending on the requirements, depth rating, uh, sophistication, horsepower, can all drive that cost up, but in excess of $3 million. This presents the opportunity for an unconventional but perfect match. Take the resources of the petroleum industry. Their ROVs and expert pilots combined with their extended presence in the deep sea for months to years. Then combine that with the knowledge of marine scientists who study the ocean. This isn't just wishful thinking. Scientists from around the world are working with professionals in the petroleum industry to form an exciting and innovative partnership. The Gulf Serpent Project. Mark Benfield, an associate professor of oceanography at Louisiana State University, is the director of the Gulf Serpent Project. Gulf Serpent is an innovative partnership between the oil and gas industry and academia. It's a global project with regional components throughout the world. Uh, for example, uh, there is Southeast Australia Serpent or Sea Serpent in Australia, and in the Gulf of Mexico we have Gulf Serpent. Serpent is designed to take advantage of the locations and the equipment uh, that are present on deep water drill ships, rigs, spars, and other facilities, and to, to translate a portion of their operational standby time uh, into scientific research time. There are large numbers, hundreds, of highly capable remotely operated vehicles which are deployed from facilities in the deep sea that are stable, and present in the same locations for many years. And what we want to do in Serpent is use those ROVs to learn about life in the deep sea below those facilities. In 2006, Gulf Serpent partnered with BP in their first dive together. The results were immediate and extraordinary, and Gulf Serpent's subsequent dives made numerous remarkable discoveries, capturing incredibly rare footage of some organisms that had rarely or never been seen before like this 20-foot-long oarfish, the only one of its kind ever to be observed at its normal depth. It made the national and international news. But 2009 was even more spectacular as the project kicked into full gear. Gulf Serpent had almost 100 ROV personnel operating a dozen ROVs, accumulating hundreds of hours of data. With the immense cooperation and generosity of companies like BP, Gulf Serpent was even allowed access to technical advances that greatly increased the effectiveness of the program. The real exciting thing about uh, Serpent now are some of the new technologies that they're putting on these ROV systems. It used to be that you had to have a research ROV before you could get HD cameras and high-resolution still cameras, but right now we've got 
high resolution HD cameras, very high intensity LED lighting systems, and all of these allow us to get an incredible picture, very, very clear high resolution images uh, of the marine life. In addition, BP has funded us, they gave us a generous grant to acquire a uh, digital still camera system. We have that operating on the uh, Deepwater Horizon on an oceaneering ROV. And with that camera, we are getting pictures that are really National Geographic quality. Using this new technology, dedicated ROV pilots have recorded these astonishing images over the past year. Amphipods are small shrimp-like creatures that normally hitch rides on jellyfish and eat them. Here, the tables are turned. This jellyfish, called Solmissus, has captured an amphipod and is about to devour it. Apolemia is a type of organism called a siphonophore. It's one of the largest of its kind, reaching lengths of up to 30 feet. It is an agile swimmer, and what we see here coiled up is actually a large net that can ensnare its prey as it drifts by. One of the greatest benefits of Gulf Serpent is the steady accumulation of multiple sightings of rare animals that gives scientists a more complete picture of how these organisms behave. This is a batho siroe, a kind of tinophore. With each new sighting, our database on its distribution pattern increases. Although far from your garden, this foot-long bathynomis is a distant relative of the pillbug or roly-poly that lives in your garden. It swims around and lives on the floor of the ocean. This one is about 1,200 meters below the surface. A significant line of inquiry for researchers concerns the diet of sperm whales that live in the Gulf. These giant creatures go through pounds of octopuses and squids just like these. As we learn more about where these octopuses and squids can be found in the Gulf, we can learn more about the whales that eat them. While scientists have named this strange creature Enipniastes, the ROV pilots have their own affectionate name for it, the Headless Chicken Monster. This fantastic creature is so new to science that it doesn't yet have a proper scientific name. For now, it's simply called Galaxy Siphonophore. Lampoteus is another newly identified species that the Gulf Serpent Project is building a database about. As with the other organisms, the repeated sightings of this animal give scientists a better picture of where and how it lives. This seldom seen creature is a monopsid. It's like an underwater spider, using its feathery legs to almost walk through the water. This is now the third direct observation to be made in the Gulf of Mexico of the massive oar fish. Before the Gulf Serpent Project, these fish had never been observed in their natural habitat. Because of the sightings by the crew on Thunder Horse, it has been featured in the national and international news. These deep sea fishes are members of the family Paralepididae. They're probably a male and female pair. Finding a mate can be a challenge in the deep sea, and it makes sense to stay together when you find the right one. Periphalopsis, a kind of jellyfish, is another creature that we're starting to observe frequently enough to be able to put together a picture of its distribution. While it may resemble a cucumber, this pyrosome is actually a distant relative of vertebrates. Recent research suggests these animals may be extremely important in transporting carbon to the bottom of the ocean when they die off. As we continue to observe their distribution throughout the depths of the Gulf of Mexico, we'll be able to better understand the role they play in the Gulf's ecology. The deep sea is home to many different types of fish, such as this tiny two-inch hatchet fish, as well as this viper fish with its long needle teeth. Another more familiar fish are tunas. Although they generally live closer to the surface, these tunas are hunting in the deep sea. It's fairly common for organisms living in one layer of the ocean to forage in another. These tuna are an example of how our world on land and on the surface is connected to the world in the deep sea. These incredible sightings are providing extraordinary information to scientists about how and where these rare, beautiful, and sometimes frightening animals live. The Gulf Serpent Project is useful not only to scientific researchers, but provides many benefits to industry. The Serpent Project really allows industry to demonstrate their commitment to the environment. They don't have to do this, but they are allowing us to use these ROV systems and conduct science. They have an interest in contributing to advancing our knowledge of life in the deep sea. 
The dives themselves are useful for the ROV pilots as well. It turns out that the skills needed to dogfight a jellyfish while simultaneously acquiring high quality footage translate well to pilot training. The serpent surveys have helped our pilots in the uh, tether management areas, depth heading, and uh, also with uh, operating the lights and camera functions, uh, adjusting the focus or the zoom levels and light. Definitely gets you out of your comfort zone. You, you're used to looking at a riser and a BOP and then you're in a cage and on the way up. Being able to stop and go out and see something that, that maybe you have never seen and gives the pilot a, uh, a different perspective, gets them out there and, and where there's no reference. They're, they're just flying out in free space. It's a, it's a different experience. In addition to BP, Gulf Serpent works with multiple partners in the industry. Shell also has taken the program well. Uh, they're fully on board with the program, supporting it, and realize uh, the importance of it. Tracking these uh, small creatures helps an ROV operator because they're, they move with the current. So it's very difficult to, to zoom in with the camera and get a very good shot of it. It takes some finesse and by in doing so it helps the operator in their other op, you know in their in their main task which is subsea equipment so they become better pilots these rov pilots who choose to go beyond the requirements of their duty have the rare opportunity to be part of a revolutionary project that represents an unprecedented partnership between industry and academia they're all on board and, and interested in doing the uh inspections they they uh, they uh, a lot of them are excited to do it they like seeing the uh, the marine life and, and interested in, in videoing them and really happy to be a part of the uh, the serpent program a lot of times we just view that as a big tub of water and where we work when you learn about all the the marine life that interacts in there it uh, it just brings you more aware of, of uh, what you could impact uh, with your uh, daily activities there. Serpent dives are carefully planned and conducted without detracting from maintenance or the priority mission of the ROV, which is to support drilling and other subsea work. We take time during our dives that is not impacting the client. As long as when we're finished with client business or, or client inspections, we can take time and inspect the water column for sea life, something that we have never seen before. We're already in place and those ROVs are already there. It's not an extra expense uh, to anyone. Uh, there's no extra manpower involved. We have the same amount of people and the same equipment that's in the water uh, that's in the same area uh, doing that job already. By using these generous resources, the Gulf Serpent Project is a useful educational tool to touch the lives of the next generation of ROV pilots and ocean scientists. Some of the most important education programs we run are an undergraduate internship program, which is coordinated through the Marine Advanced Technology Education Center, or the MATE Center in California. The MATE Center uh, has an internship which brings a highly qualified undergraduate student to LSU for six weeks in the summer. They go through a rapid period of safety training and orientation, and then we send them offshore and they become our ambassadors, working with the ROV personnel and drilling personnel at Deepwater Rigs, and then back at, in our laboratory at LSU, they work on analyzing the data. My name is Stuart Cook, and I was the 2009 uh, Gulf Serpent uh, intern. I spent six weeks at LSU and flying to Deepwater Platforms collecting uh, marine life video data. Over the summer, we uh, identified dozens of species uh, that were new to the Gulf of Mexico and some that still remain to be identified. And it's been a great experience for me uh, leading into other directions I would never have thought possible. The greatest benefit of the Gulf Serpent Project is the steady accumulation of data about the organisms that inhabit the Gulf. This massive library of information will benefit science, industry, and the general public for generations to come. To explore the vast reaches of the ocean, to dive into the depths of the Gulf, and discover all of its mysterious creatures, in the end is impossible without the people that make it work. If we didn't have the ROV personnel and the offshore personnel supporting this, there's no way that we would be able to sustain the data collection that we have. They become our oceanographers. So without the offshore ROV personnel, there's no way 
uh, that the Serpent Project would be successful.